At secondary school, most boys in today's England will meet their first ever male teacher. By now, the majority of boys have already been successfully turned off education, and only a great deal of work can bring them back again. But it's still possible. But secondary schools are no longer equipped to handle boys. Indeed, they're deliberately designed to be ill-equipped to deal with boys. The support and encouragement of female students is the manifest priority in secondary schools. Boys are clearly and deliberately sidelined in all aspects of the curriculum, under the presumption that girls are the ones who need more help and encouragement. What you had back in the 70s was that they decided the quality curriculum authority and it's in their book that boys could do better. They published that in 98 um, and they concluded in it that a lot of work was done in the 70s to improve girls in the sciences and maths because they were behind boys. And they also acknowledged at that time that boys were behind girls in English literature and languages but they chose to do nothing about that. So we had 10, 20, 30 years of progressive work aimed at girls in education to improve their education and the boys were just left out in the cold. And then of course you then had that awful headline banner in the, in the Independent um, about three years ago where it's, it's official, girls are better than boys. Now I don't know what a young boy feels when he reads that, um, but I think that's quite damning. Boys need several things in order to focus on study. Chief amongst these a physical exercise and lots of it, teachers they can respect and identify with, exciting learning material and a strong element of competition. These male traits and educational requirements are well understood elements to boys' education that any private school in the UK adheres to. That's why academic achievement in Britain is highest in boys only private schools. That's why Labour MP Diane Abbott, for example, whom we heard from earlier, risked her job to send her son to a boys only private school. She's in a position to be fully aware of the deliberate educational harm that would be done to her boy in a standard UK school. Boys are energetic and awkward and like to break the rules. They require more effort from teachers and are more of a challenge to teach than girls, but the results are generally much more impressive. Boys excel at maths, computing and the sciences in particular, but the very best students at all subjects tend to be male. The bottom line is that boys are more able than girls academically at the top end of ability. They are also less able than girls at the lower end of ability. Males almost exclusively make up the brightest and also the stupidest people on the planet. In the middle of ability exist women and the remaining men. But when the president of Harvard University dared to suggest that boys may be better at some things than girls, he was vilified for it. Harvard President Larry Summers floated the idea that when it comes to math and science, there may be an innate difference between men and women. One week and three apologies later, the debate over Lawrence Summers' remarks hasn't died down. In a letter to Harvard students and faculty, he apologized three times, saying he was wrong. In contrast, a British MP was free to claim that girls are simply smarter than boys. And I thought, I thought if he'd said that, and the girls hadn't been doing so well, he wouldn't be chairman of that group anymore. He would have been hoofed off as, and he, he said that and he was allowed to get away with it. I remember that, yeah, he yeah. said it's as simple as that and we just stopped harping on about it basically. Exactly, yeah, and he was the chairman of a group that was supposed to be doing something about it. This shows the evil that's been growing in our education system. What effect do such comments have on boys' achievement? Who's standing up for boys in our society? For an MP to say this is not only criminal, but shows just how blatant the attack on men has become. About four years ago, I spoke to my sons when they were uh, younger with some of their friends, and I, I said to my daughter, what, what do you think society feels about you? How do you feel that you're perceived? And without checking with each other, they said, well, we're rubbish, aren't we? They were probably sort of 18 to 20, something like that. In our society, it's only permissible to speak of ways in which women may be superior to men. The other way round is considered sexism, and possibly a hate crime. That's why we have several myths about women's better communication skills and multitasking. So we change the exam system so that girls come out on top at results time, and then we say that girls are smarter than boys. But girls are obviously not more capable than boys, and you only need to look around you to see this. How many females do you think were involved in creating Google? How many women do you imagine were involved in launching the first satellite? But it's not just great things, it's everything. How many girls were involved in creating even the shoes you're wearing or the screen you're watching? Let's look again at the near hysterical reactions of women to the suggestion of genetic differences where men may be more gifted than women.
there may be an innate difference between men and women. I really kept expecting him to say, you know, oh, this is a hypothesis or maybe whatever, or, or this is an idea that people used to have. When you send this message that maybe it's in your genes, you're asking women to come to work every day and prove over and over and over, yes, I really am good enough to be here. And that is exhausting. Some students say the president's comments have already had a chilling effect. There have been girls who have said, like, you know, maybe it's not worth it if I'm not going to be taken seriously in my field. This is why women in science is often a bad idea. They're led by emotion and victimhood instead of rational thought. Nancy Hopkins, who studies genetics, was in the room when Summers spoke. She was so offended, she walked out. When a professor of biology walks out of a room at the mere suggestion that genetics may play a role in abilities, you have to wonder how she became a professor of anything. Would she have walked out if Larry Summers had suggested that women may be better artistically than men, or better in language skills? I think not. Both women and men need to prove themselves in their chosen fields. If a woman can do the work, then there's no further effort required to prove her worth. It's the women that are in position due to affirmative action, rather than their ability, that need to worry about being taken seriously. And this woman seems very worried. But Summers says he was only raising a hypothesis. In a letter to Harvard students and faculty, Summers wrote, I did not say and I do not believe that girls are intellectually less able than boys. And he apologized three times, saying he was wrong. He wasn't wrong, he just ran up against feminism and got hit hard. There are obvious intellectual differences between men and women, just as there are obvious physical differences between men and women. To deny them is foolish. There are all sorts of forbidden opinions on campus. Says she's been kissed and booed for daring to challenge liberal thought, and she defends Summers' right to raise controversial theories. He should not have apologized. Every time he apologizes, he drives another stake into the heart of free discussion. He had no choice but to apologize. It's very easy for a woman to say he shouldn't have, but the rules are very different for men. Others think it might be worth finding out why there are so few women in the sciences. Wondering why there aren't more women in sciences is like wondering why there aren't more women heavyweight boxing champions, or why women can't bench press 200 kilos, or why women aren't running the 100 meters in under 10 seconds. It's because they can't do it. It's not discrimination, it's a fact of life. The topic is on every table. You're a senior. Yes, I'm an applied math concentrator with chemistry. Molly Welch wants to know why she's had only one female professor in her four years at this school. But she acknowledges female math majors are rare. Amazingly, they managed to track down a female maths and chemistry student. That's about as rare as a one-armed, black, Jewish, visually impaired, deaf concert violinist. It actually is kind of aggravating to me because, you know, I've been in a math course with, out of 20 students, only three girls, and it's just really discouraging. Why is she discouraged by studying with men? How exactly does the sex of fellow students affect the study of maths? Would she say the same if she was one of three white students in an all-black class? Women make up more than half of all graduate students at U.S. universities and colleges, but only a little more than a third of faculty. And among full professors, only 23% are women. That's because, in the main, these women have chosen to quit work in their fields to have children, and so don't get promoted into professorships. And the same is true of other professions. I've seen my best friend in Parliament, who was a young woman in her 30s, extremely capable. She wasn't willing to basically never see her young children, and so she left Parliament at the age of 38. And this website has this as its rallying cry. Are you kidding me? Native American women computer science professors? Is there no end to where women will claim oppression?